are high and dry and like uh, like we like I am actually uh fine artist. I do quite a lot of different stuff lah. I mean like. I started as a painter, then I also went to performance art, and I like participatory performance art things, like kind of like just to, um, I I don't I see them as social experiments, but not really like in a very like hard research kind of way, but really just to kind of see that in different contexts and different situations, like uh, different like uh, uh, ways of meaning making and different kinds of interaction can can uh, are possible lah. So. Um, that's why like I like to bring in the the element of participation in like my performance or even like performance installations and stuff. So that was kind of like the route I kind of took with this work uh, for we post. And when I read the the um, the essay, like um, there are a few things that stand out to me. Like I mean, I felt I really love the the how say I would say the vibe of the ambience essay. There's a very I mean, because it's a memoir, right? So there's a very strong flavor of nostalgia. There's a very strong flavor of like memory, but also, uh, I I I approach the essay in a way like um, and the, my relationship to the art and the and the memoir is more like a kind of like um, I approach it not like a collaboration, but more like a response. So when I read it, then I kind of like see what speaks to me. And then like then so certain things that I mean the, the nostalgia thing aspect and also like the like there is this like part of uh one time me uh uh in the start of this uh mention of the stall of this auntie and then and then uh Francis being in the in the place and also through eating and through like uh, being in the space like actually listening to all the different conversations in the space and getting to know the people. Not say maybe not even first person personally, but there's an element of like eavesdropping. I mean, the word maybe voyeurism is dropping, but also getting to know and just soaking up the space, and being in the pre uh, in present in the space and then soaking up the space. Not necessarily like actively engaging uh, everyone in the space uh, uh, directly, but you are still like kind of like uh, soaking up the space in different ways. And I, I, and all these like different like uh, stories that are created in this space, I thought like would be kind of interesting to, um, kind of, artistically tech and around the the notion of one time me. So that's why like I, I thought the one time me the string, uh, the 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 noodles can represent like strings that kind of tie different, different strands and narratives together. So, um. I was I just focused on this motive of one time at first, and then the idea just developed. And then I was thinking like how then we can show like different uh different threads, different narrative threads come together, different people come together, and with this motive of one time me, uh like um response to his uh, memoir. So I actually consciously didn't want to actually meet Francis first uh and discuss about how to make the work, but. Um, I just kind of like uh, ask uh, artist caravan to I kind of like contact Francis to to find out where is actually the space the place which is the Tanik uh, uh coffee shop. I think if you go uh, earlier what well, the beginning part you can actually see the 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 area is coffee shop around that area. Yeah, and actually Francis is very nice that like, he kind of like gave us the address and like we actually, I actually me and Tian she went down. Uh, and and I made I used the frame I made like a grid on top, and I actually brought like one time me to the space, and um this become like a particular artwork like in a way that like I wanted to kind of tap into the collective memory of the space, um, the one time me shop is no longer there, but um like there is actually like other food shops like there's a prata shop that's actually quite like popular and stuff, and um I was just at the space and asking people to kind of use the one time me to weave onto this grid. And it was, like, it's a learning curve. Like, I mean, there are different challenges when I uh, approach this. Uh, firstly, it's of course the one time we, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's of course it's, um, when you are there, you know, people can be quite shy and like you are going around with one time and it's COVID period and like, uh, like you know, there's, you have to touch the thing and some people may not be like comfortable, like, you know, touching the same things and stuff. So it's about a very skillful facilitation process to kind of like ask them, oh, do you want to participate and stuff? And it's very paisay as one person. So I'm very thankful that 
team was there to give the emotional support. And I also like, and it's, I think if there was more time, it was a very hot day, like uh, the one time be. So there's a few technical, logistical, technical things that I learned on that day. So uh, one thing is that if it's a hot day, uh, like the one time it dries up very quickly. <laughs> and so then it becomes very hard to weave. So you have to open every pack like fresh and like be very like strategic about it. But at the same time, you need time because uh, you can't just like go in, expect people to respond to the work you did and just get out of the space. You have to be like, like in a way, it's like what Francis does in this, this memoir. Like he just chills at the space. He just be, be there and like absorb the environment, you know, and then like possibly interact with the people in the space. Uh, so in a way, like you have to give time. Like I have to just be there sit down, you know, chill, get a poppy. You know, I was actually fasting then, so Ramadan. So it was actually also Ramadan period. So, yeah, and there was, and it was actually a Prata shop. So there was sort of like, uh, like, like uh, Muslim or Malay people, but they were not eating, you were just like sitting around. And, and, um, and like, yeah, like there's also like, so you need to, you ask them to touch like one time, me sometimes like I was wondering, like, oh, you know, like whether would they feel like you, like you're asking them to touch food when they are actually like uh, fasting and stuff. Um, and and also like, um, but but yeah, you need time. And I was just sitting there actually doing some weaving myself and really soaking in the space. And some other people, they were just be interested and say what you're doing. And then that's also like kind of like when they, you, uh, when they also participate in the work and stuff. So it's kind of like interesting to just uh, be there and also see the process. So like, these are just some shots of like the, public or some friends and stuff like doing the uh, weaving on the on the on the grid. So basically the concept is how we are all in this like space and we kind of like weave the collective memories or our experiences and individual stories together uh, with the one time me. Uh, so after the at the coffee shop I walked around the neighborhood also uh, and I met this like salon uncle and he's there like I think for 40 years already. So he's like super lao xiao. And he's also like a like a like like he 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 owns a salon and then we were talking about the coffee diam and like he actually mentions he men he remembers the one time we shop. So I was like, oh okay, that is actually very like interesting. And and I was such surprised uh, because like um he's I he's like Malay and stuff, so like I mean he says he's Muslim, so he doesn't eat like pork. And one time it's not halal, but I guess because like you live long in neighborhood long enough, uh, you live in neighborhood long enough, right? You will just know things, you'll see things, like you, even though you you may not eat it or what, but you know it's there. And so like it's just collecting all these stories, though. And then like the uncle read game, like you know he actually asked his friend to also go and do it with him and everything. Yeah, and and it was just a very interesting experience, um, being out there and actually like just, kind of not really see collecting stories but collecting like this one time movies and talking to these people at the same time and uh and and yeah so actually that actually is the main point of the work i mean if i had more time and also and stuff like i would actually like go down multiple times but uh yeah you can actually see the video of them weaving i think there's this one with So like the, the main point is actually not really the aesthetics of the work, although some of the people did very interesting things at the one time be, like in terms of different patterns and stuff. Um, maybe some become a, did a bit more abstract, some a bit more figurative, like uh, some just like kind of do very simple things, you know, just to tie and not and, and, and stuff. Um, yeah, but I think it's the, the artwork actually resides in the process of like, uh, of, of actually um, just meeting people and actually and actually like um, letting the people do the weaving and stuff. And when I actually went home, um, it wasn't very full uh, actually. Uh, and the one time it was still like white. So the original idea was actually to have the one time be like represent the red strings of fate, which is kind of like a mythological motive of like how uh, everything is connected and like um, we are all connected through strings of fate and, 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 and stuff. So I actually went to get like a, uh, red food coloring and actually died the one time when I went home. So 
when people saw that thing in the exhibition in the end, they thought, I think some of them thought it was like red rubber band <laughs> because it became like a dark red in the end. But actually, it was one time we. So, so like um, later on, the things I added on at the back, like the one time we at the at the at the end was partly aesthetical this uh, aesthetic decision, but also at the same time to kind of like remind people that the red strings of Watami la. <laughs> because because like if without the, the Watami rappers and the Watami uh at the at the in the background like I was looking at it like a storefront you know like so like a one time shop or like a place where you make one time me and stuff um yeah and 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 like so without the thing there like it, it looks like like uh, people may not know it's one time here, so like I just wanted that reference to be stronger, yeah. So 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 that's like kind of like how I approach the work, and and um, it's kind of just to invite conversation and different stories, and and really just explore that kind of like notion of collective memory, a collective notion. I mean, some of the people who actually did the work, uh, they were not like uh, uh what's called like people that live long in the place you know when i ask them oh do you remember that this one time shop they, they don't remember or they some of them just came in to eat prata uh the mutton curry that was very nice <laughs> and and yeah and 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 like um and just walking around the neighborhood and it's just this is like the but it's just to kind of like at the same time also kind of explore the collective memory, the nostalgia of the space, but also when I go there, I can't claim that I experienced what Francis has experienced in the essay, uh, in the memoir, because times has changed, the place has disappeared. Uh, I, mean, I mean, yeah, the place has, has evolved and everything, but just to at least connect to that kind of feeling of just being in a space and soaking in like that, that the, the people and, and the experiences in the space, yeah, and making like uh, connections to the space. Yeah, so so that was how like kind of like I approached the 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 memo. Yeah, I was wondering about the red actually because uh, <laughs> did you paint it or did you like use a brush and paint it or you took out the noodle and then you dye it then you put it back? Okay, okay. so like there are different ways. Uh, the brush one I thought before, so I I was like I was like brainstorming, and what I settled in the end was it's like if you look at the at the frame now, right? There are some like edges with like red, a uh, bit of red spray because uh -huh. I use like, I taped up um, what's called like trash bag at the edges in the back and then I use, I, I got like hand sanitizer, the alcohol kind, <laughs> I mixed in, I or like those isopropyl alcohol, I mixed in for coloring, I shake, 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 and then like I spray, 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 spray and spray like all the, because it, because those one time we are very fragile when it's dry, so when it's already on the grid, right? You just touch a bit, it break and then it drop already. So like I can't use paintbrush to paint and stuff, it will break. So all I did is like spray it off, spray, 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 and then like spray multiple layers until they get to the color I want. <laughs> oh, wow. mm. Yeah. So like like and then there was also like issues when I transported the work because it's very fragile. So <laughs> like the cat the cat driver was very like nice. Like, I mean like he didn't like like I was like, okay, you know, we, we have like one time we dropping at your back seat. And he's like, okay, okay, just clear out in the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the yeah, lot and everybody was very understanding. <laughs> That's cool. Mm. Mm. So the do you did you find out how when the the store was closed? Actually, I'm not sure. Leh. I just I just know from the 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 salon guy that he remembers the store like a while ago, but I don't know when the store closed. So I will have to actually talk to Francis about it. I'm meeting him for coffee like soon. Oh, I, cool. yeah. Uh, just waiting for his reply. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. But because like I wanted to email him to for the coffee like uh earlier, but then the restrictions came in. Then I was like, oh, no point like, you know because we can't dine out and uh, we can't eat out anyway. We can't like sit down and drink a copy and Starbucks or anything. So I waited until like they lifted the thing. What is your process, uh, Jennifer? Did you, because for me and friends, I think also the nature of how I was, uh, I came in, I think I came a bit later than the other artists. So there wasn't much time to 
kind of like, uh, and also I think artist Caravan also told me it's like, it's, it's up to the artists whether how they wanted to kind of like work with the writers, whether they wanted to contact them, call them or and work on the piece together or like, you know, like kind of like uh, work on it as an interpretation or as a response to the memoir. So like, I kind of chose the second route because also I came a bit later and like, um, I didn't, so I, when I chose the response, response route, I really wanted it to be my response when I read the essay, uh, rather than like kind of like, uh, kind of like a co-creation. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to meet Francis first before making the work because I thought that maybe that would kind of like color how I interpreted the thing. Uh, in a way, like, it's kind of just a, different decisions that I made along the way and then uh, it's very interesting to see what then the writer or Francis sees then from my work so it's like response 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 you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I think he went down to see the work right like like, like yeah and so I'm just excited to meet him <laughs> yeah that's cool so when uh I think actually the whole project didn't take so long from the start when mm. we put, uh, when artist caravan took over right to when we came in i think it was very very short time so we yeah. all had equally short time mm. um yeah but uh, i wanted to meet Anne, uh the writer because uh i was thinking of like publishing her writing oh. uh, the text yeah and then also because she is um in her 70s so i i thought that i should go to meet her so I went to her flat. Yeah. So we uh, arranged through Artist Caravan and then uh, went to her flat. Then we had a nice tea and then we talked. La. But actually right. her, her, her memoir of her childhood in this house is extremely detailed. Yeah. That, that, that thing we concerned wrote, right? <laughs> yeah. It's extremely detailed and it's even more detailed than what I remember from my childhood. So, and she's in the 70s. So I told her I was like I'm completely amazed because there's so many little things that happen in the house with the other people and 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 all these things that um that was in the story that there's there's no way I can duplicate in the artwork because it's just so dense and so detailed, right? So I, I told her actually the best kind of interpretation of her writing is a film. So she should try to find someone to make a film of her childhood, which is like impossible because the house is gone. So I actually went down to, to that location to look for that. What is there now? Yeah. Also, I have a picture which I can show you. This is the house that's there now. Nice. See, this is like a normal house, right? But her, the house that she was uh, living in was this really nice kind of old black and white um, colonial time house. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Which like apparently is uh really rare, so rare that um that uh this guy what's his name, Lee Kip Chin, I forgot. So this uh this this guy who goes around photographing historical architecture actually photographed a house before it was torn down. Yeah, nice. so it's one of those houses which you like completely cannot find anymore. When did do you know from her? When did they? Know. Don't know so, uh. oh, so she stayed there until she was uh wait, uh, nine she stayed there for like nine years I think until she was until she was eleven years old or something like that la. nine or eleven years old so mm -hmm. actually what she remember was really when she was a kid that's why I, I read the memoir so you sent me it's like wow yeah. her family is very tokong huh? like all the childhood memories are uh, so many different stories like like even the environment is so like detailed and then even like there's one part i remember like it says what three years old or something like that her grandma passed away then she can even remember the 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 her mother reaction uh, and, the, and the and the funeral and everything like, wow it's amazing so right? Yeah, like, I, I, mean, I mean, part of it could actually be not real, lah, but you never know. But actually, it doesn't really matter because memories are not yeah. completely real, mm. and real, right? So it's what you believe that or you, what yeah, you want to remember. Right. Yeah. So I, I thought it was quite interesting because I when I got the piece, 
I was thinking, yeah, there's no way I can duplicate this in any form. Um, and then I was thinking of um, various ways of how I could like um, respond to this tag. So I have, I've been having this kind of a little bit of a, a habit, new wish habit of naming my artworks after songs <laughs> or, or movies or whatever. So I was researching about, you know, like the popular songs of the 50s. And this song, Moments to Remember, which is the title of my work, is, um, was one of the top few songs that year. Mm. Uh, so, have you seen this? Have you all seen this? Uh, I'll just play a little bit. <laughs> Can you hear? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, so... <laughs> Yeah, just really so. so it's very nostalgic to us, la, right? But I guess for people who were living then, it's really how they kind of felt. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm imagining this, of course, right? Um, but because this was like the, you know, really a big hit then. Uh, and also I researched other hits. It's all kind of a similar type of case and, and uh, yeah, innocence, I think. Okay, you can go and see on YouTube later. Huh? Um, yeah, so it's um, so so I wanted to kind of find a way to kind of make a work that felt, uh, you know, felt very positive and very kind of peaceful and very happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, but at the same time, I wanted to include these elements that I found, which I thought was quite interesting from the fifties. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so, uh, hmm. yeah, it's kind of very complicated, my process. Uh, okay, so, okay, let me see. So, I wrote this blog post, uh, oh. which is on my website, um, about the process, actually. Uh, and I just, I just wanted to show you this part the 50s so i tried to capture the feeling of the 50s and then these are some of the other things rose chan barco misoni all these things also happened in the 50s that i tried to include in the work in some way oh barbie <laughs> small yeah so so that's why there's a barbie um i mean that's one of the reasons why there's a barbie doll in the work um let me show the picture of the work for people who haven't seen it Wait, uh, where is it? This one. Yeah. Oh, um, is, is the barbie supposed to be pointing at the yes. at the at yeah. the um, So the barbie, barbie doll, you know, um is something that was created in the 50s, but also in a way I, I'm using it to kind of represent a girl, a little girl. I mean she's like dressed like a little girl. Although yeah. the body is not loud, right? So, so in the way she is like lying down and you know how you like lie down on the grass and point at the stars. Mm. It's kind of that kind of feeling where you are in awe and kind of you know you are just looking out at the world. Yeah. So um, so the Barbie doll is one of the things, and and then um, I also found this piece of cloth with blue roses. And, and that was kind of, uh, in a way, I thought, you know, because of Rose Chan. Rose Chan is this very famous wo woman who was performing with snakes and all kinds of weird shit in mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the 50s. And then so I thought, okay, I, you know, um, in a way, this is kind of a reminder of her. And all these beats and things that I sewn on, they all kind of became some kind of uh, maybe abstracted motives of, of the research. Um, so in her, in Anne's right, a memoir, there's this thing where um, there's this part of the house which she calls 
crossing the river. Mm. Do you remember? So it's yeah. like the front of the house and the back of the house. There is yeah. this, yeah, part. So, um, so this this line in the front, the straight line, is kind of you know the, the river, mm. and then uh, it's very simplified lah. Um, and then I had uh, this uh, kind of rectangular thing at the back near near Barbie's legs. It's kind of like um, wow. sorry the coffin. Yeah, so oh. like, like that. So I, I tried to like kind of uh, abstract Absolutely. various motifs yeah. from the stories and from the fifties. Nice, nice. And then this, of course, the green backdrop. Um, is, the I would have known uh, is the rose, rose, rose. Uh, yeah, it's all that little. It's the. It's all small, small things, lah. Because that's actually, and her work is uh, her writing is also a lot of small, small things. So I wanted in a way to create that, but. Obviously, this is not as dense as her writing, lah. Um, and then this green backdrop actually is uh is kind of like a uh woven fabric, and that is kind of um uh a reminder of Missoni, which is this very famous brand of uh yeah woven uh, woven clothes. I guess that's what you call it. Um, then I'll show you. So this is uh. Sorry, is this in the way? So, so this is um, this is at the end of the day when the music of the library turns on and tell you to leave. So I thought it was quite nice. Uh, I mean, kind of this jazzy thing kind of goes with it. Um, and then uh, yeah, I, I don't know. And then I I one day I was just walking around the streets and then I found this uh, palm part because yeah. it, um, which kind of looked like a tree. Uh, so I took it back and then I painted it gold. Uh, mm. But because because also that Anne mentioned about this palm. Yeah, the palm tree. Uh, palm oil. Uh. Yeah, the the chicken <laughs> feet. Chicken leg. Yeah, yeah, chicken yeah, leg. Yeah, yeah. So it was really funny. So when I met her, we were like, I was, we were like laughing about it lah. Because like, I don't know if Joey has read it because she looks perplexed. <laughs> <laughs> so so when she was young, she all she kind of always thought that um some chicken was stuck in a tree yeah. because she kind of see this chicken feet or something. Yeah. And, and then only much later when she's like much older, then she realized actually it's a palm oil palm uh tree. The male, the male flower. Yeah, yeah, the male flower. Yeah. So I thought that was quite funny. I mean, I cannot find an oil palm here, but I happen to find this palm thing. So it kind of is also a stand in. So is this, this palm thing you found before, like you even, it's not a conscious decision to find the palm thing. You found it, then you put it in, then you, yes. then after. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's serendipity actually. Wow. So it just, it just happened. And then, so I felt that, okay, this palm thing wanted to be in the work. So I put it in the work. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was quite interesting. Like, it was, um, the process was kind of quite intuitive, but also quite open to chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I was looking for some kind of uh, lights, and then I found this light also. So that mm. was quite cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I just really, uh, in a way, I kind of tried to pick out elements from the story, but not really kind of duplicate show the story lah, which yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but i don't know if people actually kind of i don't know what people got out of this work yeah I think it's always like you have to read this i don't okay one one question i will ask i i not it's not just to you but i think oh. that's already is that is it necessary i don't know like when i see when people see my work or your work or any of our work in the exhibition right is it necessary that they read the memoir and then uh, and then they see the work, or can the work like be like in a work in itself, or you know, uh, of course, the memoir kind of gives a bit of like context to the work, but the memoir is its own thing, also, right? You know, the work doesn't seek to represent or like kind of like what you say, tell or show the memoir uh, in, 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 in its entirety. So, like, yeah, it's just a very interesting question I'm thinking about because, like, when I read the essay for, I mean, the, the memoir or like the end's memoir and then I see your work now it's like it's like yeah like it's a different level of understanding that kind of and, and when actually speaking to artists of when you like speaking to you then you talk about the roles and everything it's also a different level 
of 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 understanding lah. But I mean, just whether is or is it necessary? Because when I I'm thinking about people see my work, they just see one time meeting string up. Or they may not even know it's one time meeting. It's like some red string being there, and then like in these funny shapes, and then there's one time meeting there. So like like I just wonder what everybody different people get different things out of different things, and just wonder like what kind of is it necessary that the work be read with the memoir? You know? <laughs> Yeah, so when I met Anne uh, and we were talking, right, she actually reminded me of this word which I've seen before but I didn't really think about. And it's, it's called ekphrasis. E-K-P-H-R-A-S-I-S. -S. So it's, it's a term where um, an art form or a medium kind of responds to another art form or medium but respond in a way where you kind of... Uh, pick up the essence. Mm. Yeah, so I think this is quite quite um, suitable for what we are doing here if we repost, right? I mean this thing. Oh, uh, because we I don't think I don't think that we are really trying to, you know, show the the actual writing. So I guess what we pick up uh, yeah, so what we pick up is what we are interested in as artists law. Right, right. And and in a way it creates a new work. But mm. in a way, it also that is a dialogue with the original work, lah. Yeah. Like, uh, so the interesting, oh. Yeah. Because it's like if Jen, if like you read my Francis essay and then I read like Anne's, like I think that work that the things that we focus on will be also different, and the things that come up in the end for the for the artwork also will be different, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone will respond. Actually, it. Next time, maybe we should do one, one project where it's only one text and like we get like 10 of us in the pretty. <laughs> but I think it will, it will, all, it will totally take different time works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, I find that one thing that is common between, I think it's because of the nature of memoir writing is that this sense of nostalgia of this like the past and, and so it was like the Tang Ling Huat. Uh, I think Francis experienced in the memoir, right? It was before I was, I was born. I mean, like, like, uh, like, I mean, I won't say I'm old, but I also not say I, I that young. <laughs> I, I, that, I, that old, uh, you know, like, but so, like, I think, like, the, um, like, the, like, yeah, so I also had, like, you had to imagine also, I also went down to the space and she felt it, but it's not the same, right? It's like, it is, uh, it is, um, it is, the space has already, the, the space that Francis was in the memoir has already gone. I mean, that's ephemerality of experience. And, and like, um, but I kind of like, like how we both have approached the, this whole like nostalgia in maybe different flavors. In not just the artist flavor, I think the memoir has different flavors. Like yours have a very like, uh, I feel like, I mean, I, it's a very like innocent, childhood innocence kind of like uh, flame. Well, mine, I read, I, I, it's like, it's a bit like, um, there's, I wouldn't say sexual, but like there's a bit of sexuality involved. You know, like there's this boy element of voyeurism. There's like the conversations you overhear the woman talking about, you know, like uh, dating relationships, you know, like uh, sex, bras, things like that. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, just different aspect or different part or different phase of life and a different flavor. Law. So like that's why like I added the, I approach it in a different flavor. So like the one time we, uh, motif seems very abstracted and very like uh, unemotional. <laughs> I mean, in just the medium and the form itself, but like uh, I mean, just a physical form. But like when the, the I inserted a pun in the in the in the title one time me one time you the one pun I use the spelling in English one time which actually has a bit of a sexual connotation inside. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that Tian? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think for your piece, Francis' piece, he probably maybe he was like, I don't know, in his 20s, single 20s man face. <laughs> because you know, obviously, um, he was like, you know, interested in the women and what they were talking about. Um yeah, so it was actually quite 
in a way quite external, like what's happening around him, but then he processes it with some poetry as well. Yes, yes, right? Yes, it's quite interesting. Yeah, um, I suppose to Anne's piece, she was really a kid. And, yeah. and a lot of it was, you know, uh, things she did as a kid, but, but she really just remembered it. Mm. Um, as, as memory, la. she never wrote it down or whatever. Yeah, so it was quite quite interesting the 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 different ages, different yeah. like, kind of uh, phase they were in la. It's quite different, lor. It's quite different. It's just it's still memory and nostalgia, like just different flavor. And yeah. I thought like, I really enjoyed Francis' writing in a way that like, it's a it's like it's a rash with the point, but also like there's a bit of poetry kind of element, but also like tongue in cheek. You know, it's like it's not like just like overly sexual or sensual, but it's very tongue in cheek. It's very playful. I, I really like reading his essay. La. <laughs> I don't he, know what it means to me, but like, that's why. I... <laughs> uh, he also mentioned that he takes photos uh, like kind of sexual photos. Like. Really, yeah. <laughs> so you should find out about that. I think that might be quite interesting. <laughs> a special secret uh, photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah. do you do you think you will do more this kind of like you know uh participatory work? Yeah, I guess I I'm still in the direction you're going or I think this one just came out like that, but I have a few works before that I was also doing kind of participatory like uh performance uh, where like there was once where I just lie down, I lie down and let people throw it on me. But I mean it's more than that, lah, but like there's a bit of sensuality in that also, but it's it's about like control and power and and and, and surrender and stuff. But um, yeah, things like that. Uh, I I'm very interested in the participatory element. So I think that's why at the back of my mind why this actually came out participatory work. Uh, but I think it's different formats. Have, I'm still learning lah because um, uh, like every time I facilitate or set up the conditions for fun spray work is always different you cannot control and it's a different spaces different environment different people have different kind of responses so it's like i think what i only can control or say control in terms of is like my own state and like how then i approach it or maybe facilitate the experience for example like if i go down next time i know logistically i need to spend more time there the one time me would get dry you know things like that how do i uh, in situ, I work and then like, you know, how do I invite people to participate? Because like, it's not just sitting there and, and then expecting people to come or like, you know, go, or going around and like touch on people and then they call police on over on you. You know, there are all these little things that, you know, it's get, it, it takes skillful, skillfulness, la, I say. And also at the fine line on like how much you influence the situation. You know, like, like for example, like if I am advised or like a reporter, I mean, going in the situation in a different way as compared to like as an artist just working inside and inviting the audience. I mean, what is your relationship with the space? What is the relationship with the people in the space? Uh, things like that. I have to still, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. And I think in every work, it changes also. Yeah. So like these are just things that I'm exploring. Like, I think these are interesting things to think about. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, wonton mee was my favorite, one of my favorite food when I was a kid. <laughs> Where I was living in a, like a shop house and the, the coffee shop next door had wonton mee and chicken rice. So uh, all of those were like things that I used to eat a lot. So, yeah. so you have any, any like recommendations for wonton mee? I don't eat it anymore. Oh, yeah? I don't Who eat pork anymore. Oh, um, eat but I think the, very, the famous one in... What's that place? Juchet is still there, right? Apparently they make their own noodles and all that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I actually I really haven't eaten it in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But actually many years ago, I I curated a project in the coffee shop. Oh um, nice. Yeah, actually 20 years ago. That's just how old I am. Um, that there used to be a coffee shop opposite our substation in this corner okay. that's called Hot Hiap Leong. Um, okay. and that's also the coffee shop where Royston Tan did a short film uh, in uh, and when they were closing 
uh, I mean they were closing for good because they were gonna redevelop that place and all that. Um, so we did uh, actually Artist Village. Uh, uh, I organized under Artist Village this uh, kind of uh, art party like, like a farewell party to the coffee shop. And because artists used to hang out there, you know, it was just opposite substation. And then uh, I got like various artists to kind of respond to the space and to the whatever's going on there. La. So that was quite fun. Yeah, but I cannot find any photos. Oh no, not <laughs> Yeah, I was going to find that. Yeah, uh, that was quite fun. So, and and also recently, uh, because Jill, Jill Maso, he's going to leave uh, next month. Yeah, he's going to go think- to France next month, right? So, actually, when he came in the 80s, he used to do a lot of things in the coffee shop. Yeah, yeah and even in Newton. Recently, in Koda and stuff, like, even in the exhibition, like, he has, like, stuff, like, photos of, like, you know, the coffee shop out there, then he yeah. made, like, that. <laughs> like, the coffee yeah, shop, yeah. like, and stuff. Yeah, he did a series of paintings and drawings, collage and all that of, like, you know, those... Uh, the old school marble table with the wooden chairs. Yeah, so I think uh, coffee shop really is kind of, you know, something that is quite, uh, in a way, traditional, but also quite uh, localized. Yeah. So it's mm. quite interesting to actually explore this theme more. Lah. Yeah. Yes. And because the old school coffee shops are all gone, are more or less gone, right? The one in Tang Ling Hot is still quite old. Quite old school, yeah. Okay. It's still pretty old school. Yeah, law. So maybe we can do more things there now that you met them. <laughs> we can do a artist caravan project there. <laughs> I think, oh. I know, like this whole like, recent thing about oh, you know, my support support local hawker. Mm-hmm. Okay, but this whole COVID yeah. actually the whole thing because we can't even dine in. But I mean, so support hawker culture and everything. That's like part of like our government initiative. Um, I think like there are, there are different ways to support it, like, you know, like not just by patronage or by just like, like yeah, I mean like through art, through different things. Uh, and and I always like the whole like idea of like food being the connecting factor for a lot of people. I mean, I think we Singaporeans, I mean, I think everybody in the world has to eat. <laughs> so like, like I thought the one time motives for my work was like, you know, it's not just strings, noodles and strings, like tying people together, like literally like the physical representation of a string, but the metaphor of a string, but also like food as, as a kind of like a cultural collective symbol that, you know, like, you know, it brings comfort, it brings like, uh, yeah, connection, hmm. it brings shared experiences. Yeah. Like we all go eating the same food, like, Kind of the same, right? you know, when you say chicken rice, we can't know what we mean. <laughs> or one time we can't know what we mean. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, things like that. I mean, um, yeah, I'm definitely interested to explore more in terms of this, um, these motifs uh, or this like context in my work. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, and I wanted to know, what, what do you think of the, the mobile structure? <laughs> was it like a was it like a difficult thing to work with for you or oh yeah how, how what what was it like I was would say di- it was different <laughs> it's different and, right yeah yeah because I tend to like to make big works and like this one is like no I need to work within the confines of this but then again like I feel like sometimes when you have confines right uh, you need limitation then you can <laughs> like mm-hmm. from even to the approach of the essay like uh uh, the the memo, this memo, like there's so many things, like there's so many. The, that's the thing about, like even I think in ends when there's a multiplicity of experiences, of memories, of conversations, uh, in in each of these essays, and like I cannot in as one artwork seek to represent all of them. I I, I don't yeah, but so what I did, I limited my scope and focus on certain motives that came up to me. I mean nostalgia, memory. And also the, the motive for one time me. I mean, I limited myself, and from there, then I, I it, the limitation becomes a springboard for for expansion. So you contract first before you expand. Like it becomes like so. For example, if I, I tell myself, oh, I can do art, I can do anything. Then I, like I get lost, right? But if I say I want to do art on a certain theme, the theme then becomes a limitation where I can then become free, you know. And so like then from this one time me, it came the idea of the participatory art and then like you know then also going in and you know um 
like uh, collecting memories, things like that. Uh, yeah, so so I think like the um, like that's how like kind of like I l limited myself, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't start with like okay option one two three, one of these. You you kind of almost immediately talk about one time is it? I went in a very intuitive way. I just read the whole thing and I was like, what are the things that stuck for me the most? Okay, then I was like, oh yeah, one time we end the Borisum part. I think there's two, two things, the <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, like then later, after later, from there, I just let it cook a bit. And then later, I looked at the, the frame. So like the frame is another limiting thing, right? You know, like I can't, the, the medium, the, I mean, the, the, the format is kind of set in that kind of box or around it to a select extent. And then sort of thinking like, so then how then had all this come together? And then I was like, oh yeah, I can just put the grid there, you know, and then how, then after that, it's about really thinking about the grid. But at first I thought about, yeah, but there's a different, I remember I was talking to Joey about this, like there, are there were different like, ideas that came out in the beginning, like, um, like, um, like there was, um, like I was thinking of the grid and then like, Taking one time and throwing, it becoming like not <laughs> performance, performance, like throwing one time on it, you know, like and then and then let it like kind of like stuck there and then form its own patterns and stuff. That was like option. That was another option. But I mean, these are just ideas that come out in brainstorming phase, right? But it came out from the few limitation of the grid, the box, one time with motive, uh, and stuff like abstract ideas like memory, nostalgia, you know, loss, uh, things like that. Uh, yeah, and. And then after that, then I thought, you know, actually going down to the space and see first is actually better. It's a good idea. And then later from there, then came in like, oh, actually, why not go down to space, see, and also ask about people, I mean, talk to people. And then after that, why not actually let them actually participate in the work, you know, like, so yeah, it is, that, that was how it kind of like uh, evolved. But I guess the box is just different though. Like, uh, I didn't feel it was difficult, but I did feel that, yeah, I mean, at first a bit uncomfortable, but it's just because it's different. <laughs> because like, it's not like something that I am just like, I buy my own canvas, I do myself or like, I, yeah. And it's been a while since I made installation, I guess I've been working a lot with just pure performance for a while. So it's nice to kind of like do something very more physical again. <laughs> yeah. Mm. How about you, Jennifer? Yeah, Jen I, I thought it was, I, I looked from the beginning, I looked at it as a container. Um, mm. You know, the, the limitation of this space that I have to work within this space. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought it was quite uh, useful also that we had the, we had the, the, the thing for as, you know, quite, quite early so we can start working on it. Yeah, mm. because usually, you know, usually if not, then you go into a space and you install in the space itself. It takes a lot more time. Uh. And this one you can kind of you know play around with it and it's kind of like a little studio in itself. So that was quite good. And yeah, I think yeah, point, correct, right? Like it is a little space you work within that yeah, space. Yeah, so it's, it's a container, la, to me, it's a container. Yeah, but I, I thought it was quite interesting that Julian, Julian actually was the only one who really just kind of like forget about this space. <laughs> you just use it as a table and then put stuff on it. So so I, I thought it was uh Quite interesting also because I didn't even think of that possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Long. And then um yeah, and then the fact that it could be uh, wheeled around and then stacked and all that. I thought that was a really interesting. Uh, there's um, this whole thing horizontal. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Um yeah. I wonder what's gonna happen to that thing actually after. Yeah, that's <laughs> Do something with it again, maybe. But it's yeah. actually quite small also. So so you know it's not easy actually. In a way it can be you can see it as easy or you can see it's very hard to try to contain everything in a small space. Yeah. yeah. Because usually if you were to do an installation, it would be a much bigger space too. Yeah. Correct. I mean, this is kind of like an object, but but an installation space at the same time. Which makes it a bit complicated. It's, I think. Like, right? it's an art object in its own entirety, but at the same time, it's also like I see like a portal. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like it's like what you say, like going into a studio or like like even yours, like there's so many elements within that space. Mm. It is 
isolation in itself. Like you go in, you stick your head in, it's like it is a wall already. It's like yeah. the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, you can see it as a frame, right? A, a photo frame and then what's yeah. So yeah, it's lot. interesting. La. The size of it is quite an interesting element, I think. Mm. Mm. Okay, Joey asked me a question like will I do the one time you work again? I would if if uh ongoing like I see because I say that like, this is like a response to a memoir and like if it's actually evolving to an ongoing collaboration where it's like I respond to Francis, Francis responds to me and like you know this thing goes on and then you see where it brings us, you know, like why not, right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean I'm just keeping myself open, like you know. For now, I just for this current thing that we already like took down, I think like the the current version I'm I'm done. <laughs> You know, but like where the overall arching project goes, you know, who knows? Yeah, I can. I mean, I haven't met Francis yet, also. So, so like, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Hmm. I guess. I guess I'm asking more like not so much whether or not this project would if if you were to continue whether you continue with Francis, but more like uh this whole because you mentioned how oh will this will this be a shift in trajectory of your your practice because you mentioned like oh you, you know you haven't been working with physical or uh you've been working in performative um uh, um performance <laughs> so then if this is something that you have that has a little more uh permanent for mm. at least a time period and you are collecting stories along the way of your your participatory performance, you know, in the streets, um, with so many unknown factors. You know, would this experience change or shift your the trajectory? Way I, I suppose. I, I think this is a very good question because actually, if you are just the simple answer to this is yes, because I mean, like, I feel like even through this whole experience, I learned a lot, and like, it does like shift in certain things in the way I think and work. Uh, and it is very exciting at the same time. It is it is very, it's quite scary, I feel. <laughs> because actually I did uh, encounter, I mean, if you ask here, like you were there, like, like there was this guy, like uh, I was, we, we walked so so from this coffee shop, we walked, then we then met the salon guy. Then after we went to another food center, we, should, we wanted to kind of catch more people, la, you know, there's more traffic there, right? <laughs> and then later, so we just, I was just chilling at the edge, and then I was at the, not even in the food center, but the outside, and then like, uh, outside table, sitting there and doing my one time meeting, waving, and then, and then like, um, I was, you know, asking some people to do also, la, then say like, there's this guy, like, from the food center, like, he's like, asking what am I doing and stuff, then he, he called, like, I don't think he called police or he called what? I think he called NEA or the I mean the the, the one that manages the center one. Lah. So like yeah, he I he called on the phone and then I, then I had to speak to them, the authorities on the phone. But then I didn't get to travel. I mean like you know, I just said that like, you know if 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 um if I'm not computer, I'll just move lah. But uh like I just explained about the nature of the project and everything, and they were very nice. I mean they were just doing their job. So but it's just these little things that like you know, actually doing in Singapore, <laughs> like uh we have to be kind of a bit like um cognizant about law. Yeah, especially doing like performance art or participatory art in the public. And this is kind of like public uh participatory performance. I mean sometimes like had to if OPN had to get license or what, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, but I think this is something that um definitely I want to explore more in, in other ways, uh, not necessarily in this particular format, but there are other formats that explore this also. Hmm. So but did anybody say anything about the fact that you're using food as art? Like uh, food items. Oh, uh, I think that's the, one of my immediate reactions. The people in the industry, <laughs> uh, they didn't really ask so much question, uh, actually. They just like, oh, very fun, okay, we can one time here. Then they didn't weave, then they fly, then it break very easy. Then they like, oh, yo, actually, I'm done for. Then they go and take more from me. Then they, <laughs> yeah, like, like, uh, then, uh, I mean, some people, there are some people who, I think it's more the artist people who, uh, and the authorities are a bit more, 
concerned about the food. I mean, the artist people are just like, wow, so interesting, use food as, uh, <coughs> as art. Like, you know, <coughs> um, <coughs> because like, we like to think about media, we like to think about different things uh, and concept and things. Um, like, but for the authorities, I guess like um, and, and the NLB, we did email them to ask them whether is it allowed to display the work <coughs> inside the, in the library with food because it's made of food. And like, at first they thought that I was actually going to do the performance, the participatory thing in NLB itself, uh, letting people in NLB do the weaving, which I think is impossible because of COVID plus there's food and stuff. So, you know, you don't want to touch the same, <clears throat> no interactive artwork, obviously, that was our NLB. And then also they were concerned about rats and stuff. <clears throat> but then because, so we clarified and then we, I did experiments also with the one time we, so realize once it's dry, it's dry, it's like Play-Doh and it's dry. <clears throat> or like uh, tempera paint, which actually is made of egg tempera paint. Like if you dry, it's like it's just, it's, it, there's no like, um, like it doesn't attract insects, it doesn't attract ants, and, like, it's just a material already. Like so, so like, um, like, like I then we we just like flyers with NLB, and then they were like, fine, okay, you know, you can just, you can, you can bring your Watami <laughs> into the library. So, I think that was quite interesting. Uh, I mean, Joey can chip in a bit more because I mean, she was in the email track. She was doing as much as the li liar scene. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, if it's a gallery, gallery space, not substation, of any other gallery space, I think cannot already. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I was really happy that NLB allowed this though. Like, I mean, it's NLB, like, you know, it's library somewhere, like, like don't <laughs> put this like, Super, I mean, in gallery, sometimes some gallery a bit more avant garde, they allow it like, and stuff, food artworks, right? I mean, but it's NLB, man. It's like, you know, eating lollipop in NLB also illegal, you know? <laughs> Actually, in some places, even sand is, is a problem. Like, simply sand, right? Yeah. yeah, because, like, you know, it's uh, organic material. Yeah. 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 Organic yeah. material, any kind of organic material, they would have problems with. Sand, Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was that was fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but actually, I was asking about the ethical issue of using food. Ethical issue. Yeah. Like, I mean, like food should be eaten and not wasted. Oh, you don't play with food, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, in that sense, lah. I know you. You tried to eat the others. Did you, that not. Did you eat it? Uh, I, I, I did I did try I bring back you know like, like uh, the one time we in, not the red one la, the red one I, I have hand sanitizers uh, red hand sanitizer free on it so like poisonous you know but the the, the one time we had dried ones in the in the bag like I actually brought everything back and like and I showed Selene or to Joey it's like yo like <laughs> very dusty you know <laughs> and my mom actually I didn't even talk about it I was like yeah well, you know it's just dried, dried foods right you know it won't spoil I just want to boil it and then cook it and then like it did. Then my mom say, hey, you put how long outside? Dusty, right? Then I was like, oh, yeah, oh, got dust, oh. Never mind, never mind. I just got to boil it off. Oh, the dust, I put it <laughs> So I actually tried eating. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take photo, though. I should take photo. Don't give me a Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like. Brought, okay, Jen, so just was, <laughs> he actually brought it home and he was seriously going to eat it. And then Xiaoyin myself was like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, I don't know what has time over it. Don't say that. I, mean, I was raised as a kid not to waste food, but it was also kind of me like to I like to experiment. <laughs> so like I want to see how does dried wonton me taste like if you boil it again, you know, like because normally when we buy from supermarket it's like fresh one and then you boil. Like if it's dry, then like you boil, it's like what you know, like does it still taste like one time me? <laughs> so do it taste the same? It's the same. <laughs> it still has the the baking soda taste. You know the tan tan sui, yeah, the kam sui taste, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like I I, I get like some people may say, oh, you know, you're wasting food or what. I mean, like, um, at first that's why, like, if I for actually using the just the ones on the front, uh, without adding all the one time at the back, right? I think. I would not be so concerned, but I can see the co concern because like I have so much one time we had a bag. Yeah, it's kind of like it's a static decision and also like to actually remind people it's one time we. But but then I get that yeah, law, like this this stuff can be perceived as wasted. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we have to wrap up soon. Um, or oh, actually wrap up now. <laughs> any any questions from the floor or does Jai and Jen, do you guys want to finish off with any concluding statement? Hmm. I think I really enjoyed this this uh, project. It's interesting to see how everyone has uh, has responded to the text, um, mm. and no, so all the hours are really completely different. So it's just very nice. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank thank you, Artist Caravan, for <clears throat> organizing. I think it's very interesting also, <clears throat> and it's it's just a pity that we didn't like get to gather everybody to discuss yeah. and everything, but it's COVID, right? So we will do it next time <laughs> if we have a chance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but thank you, like, very, very... I felt that also, like, not just I learned from everybody, because see the ideas, I feel like my own, like, uh, like, the box, uh, and also the memoir, responding memoir thing, it did, like, kind of push my... Uh, it made my practice evolve a bit also. So made me think about other possibilities of how to, of art making. So I think that was actually something very precious. And I thank Artist Caravan for that. Then thank you all of you all for that. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for contributing in such a short time as well. Like uh, I think we it was it was a tough tough call, but uh <laughs> yeah awesome. And I think the the um working with the mobile mobile port was really <laughs> everybody had like Jen say everybody have a different way of working with it really push out of the box <laughs> idea the box not out of the box <laughs> yeah. in the box and out of the box Jen Jen I was just gonna say to you you have this free association like formula Jen <laughs> Jen Pio free association <laughs> Because I walk into your 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 cave and then oh, everything has got a everything has got a, a metaphoric or symbolic representation. So yeah, yeah that's something yeah. that I pick up. Then everything was found of Jack, right? Uh yes. Yeah. Mm. And <laughs> yeah, and I, I actually tend to prefer more minimal stuff. Yeah. So so every time I put something in, I feel that it has to have a meaning in mm. a way, like, you know, I'm not like completely abstract artist type, you know. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so it's kind of um, every little thing meant something to me, but it doesn't really matter whether the audience gets it. Mm. Or, yeah, it could be a number of things, like someone was saying about the egg yolk um, at the top of the work. Which mm-hmm. for me, it was more like, Maybe the sun or the moon. But if you think it's an egg, that's fine with me too. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's so. nice. Thank you for, for thank you for sharing, Jai and Jen. I think yeah. it's uh, really through this conversation that other people would know a lot more about. we will be able to get all these tidbits about the, the works, whether they have seen it or not. Oh, thank you. Thank you. See you guys again. Thank you. Yeah, see you.